Well, today is a very special day for me. 42 years ago, I finished my first year of kindergarten. <laughs> I still have to go back next year to kindergarten again. <laughs> you know, when we celebrate this time of the year that we end things, not only was it 42 years ago that I finished kindergarten, it's 30 years ago yesterday that I graduated high school. Right? That's a long time ago, right? You know, we think, wow, am I ever going to get through all of this? You know, and I like, I've been sentimental lately, and I've been looking back, I was downloading all the pictures on my phone to my computer, and I had thousands of selfies <laughs> and, and different things, and so I was back looking at it, it made me sentimental, it made me look back, and I, maybe it made me think back to when I was in kindergarten 42 years ago, right, and what was popular back then, what were the things that I enjoyed, and I was trying to think, do I have anything at home from then? Right? And I do, I showed you the little flower I made for my mother on Mother's Day that, that hung on her dress. I have that, and I also have one toy from when I was, was back in kindergarten, way, way back when, right? And it's this Pillsbury Doughboy, right? And it's the 1971 on this one. I got in back in 1970, so even before I was in school, actually before I was in school. But it's one of my oldest toys that I have, right? Right, the Doughboy, right? We like the Doughboy, right? He, he kind of comes alive. And, and what do people like to do to his stomach? What do they do? They poke it, right? They go, oh, what's he say? What's he get? <laughs> right, right, you know, so hold on just a minute. Mm. And I like to get changed. All right, that's right. And what does my shirt say? Go ahead and poke me. Right? You know, you know, and for this past two, three months, my belly got real big over the past 42, 48 years of my life, 47 years of my life. I got getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And sometimes when you ever see someone who has chubby cheeks, you just want to go, whoo! You know, and people want to go, whoo! You know, I got to give a shake of, of, my, of my big belly, too. You know, and they want to give it, a, give it a little poke, right? But we all love the dough boy. Right? We, we love the dough boy. And when you come home from school and mom has homemade chocolate chip cookies cooking in the oven or something, you can kind of smell them that, that, that they're there, right? Or if your mom has vegetables cooking for you, you know, I know their mom doesn't have any of that. You know, but whatever. But the dough boy, we, we could smell the aroma in it. And in my life, when I graduated from high school, I made my living by being a dough man. I, and, and I owned a pizza shop. My sister Debbie, we worked for different pizza shops and stuff. And I could do make great pizzas. I'm a, I'm a great pizza maker, and I like like to make it. And so sometimes I was like, you know, really rolling in the dough, right? And I was the I was the dough boy, or I was the dough dough man. Well, today we're here to talk a little bit about the dough man. Today we're going to celebrate that Jesus is the bread of life. When you think about the bread coming to life again, we sometimes we may think about our doughboy, right? Right? He's like a living little man, right? He can kind of walk around and stuff. He's like the living, living bread. But Jesus says he is the living bread that is given for us. And today, I have a story about a little boy, just like all of you, like when I was in kindergarten. He came to hear Jesus speak. And when he was there, there was 5,000 people that gathered to hear Jesus speak that day. And Jesus was like me, and he talked a long time, right? And the people were out on the, out on the hillside, and they were getting hungry. Do you ever get hungry in church? Do you ever get, a, get hungry where you're sitting in class and you just need a little snack or something? Well, everybody was getting hungry, and they said, Jesus says, hey, we need to feed all these people. And he said, how are we going to do this? It would take a half a year's wages to feed all the people there. He says, how are we going to do it? And there was a little boy, and he says, take my lunch. Just like his brown bag lunch, like we carry our lunch bags and our lunch boxes to school. He says, take my lunch. He gives it to Jesus. And inside his lunch box was some fish and some bread. And Jesus prayed over that fish and bread. And he was able to take that one kid's lunch and he was able to feed 5,000 people. That's a great miracle, isn't it, right? Imagine if Jesus could take your school lunch and feed 5,000 people with your lunch tray. Or what's in your lunch box. That would be a miracle, right? You know, you know, especially with school food, right? If he could uh, get 5,000 people that want to eat, eat school food every day. But he took his gift, right? And Jesus made his little gift into something bigger, right? And the last day that Jesus gathered together with his friends, 
he gathered together one last time. They gathered around a table like this, right? And Jesus was going to celebrate. And it was a time for them to remember how for 40 years, Moses <coughs> led the people out of Israel to the promised land. And they tell a story when they have a meal. They call it the Passover. And they eat different things on the plate. And each thing on the plate represents something in the story. We don't have time to get into all those meetings. But in the last part, there's, a, there's bread on the plate. And Jesus changed the meaning of the bread. And when Jesus took the bread, he lifted it up, he thanked God for it, and he broke the bread. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for me. Jesus was saying, like, he's like the dough man. So hold on to this. So, as a second ago, we had a whole body, right? But now it's in many pieces. And Jesus is the church is like that. We're one body made up of many pieces. But not only did Jesus bless the bread and said, this is my body that is broken for you. When the supper was over, he took the cup. And this was a special cup. It was a cup of blessing. And they were waiting for the prophet Elijah to come before the, the, the God-man would come to earth. And he lifted up and says, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. When you look back over your life, you may not have lived 48 years like me, right? But you may have some sin, right? You maybe have some things that you did wrong that we're sorry for. So Jesus says, when you drink this cup, remember that you can be forgiven. So what we're going to do, we're going to have community together because some of you are going to go back to junior church. We're going to take our body and dip it in the blood and then eat it. And when we do that, you should stay for and say, Jesus, forgive me. And he makes us clean and he makes us into a new person. Just like that dough man, comes something new comes out of the oven. So let's go ahead and just take a moment and you can dip your bread in and you can eat it and you can say your own little prayer to God. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. Oh God, you took a special gift from a child and you fed the multitudes. We thank you for the children that are here today to lead the way that we too can feast on the bread of life. Forgive us of our sins, cleanse us, and help us go and tell all the world that you are the bread of life that came down from heaven. Help us to forever feast on your holy word and help us to become followers of your son Jesus. Amen. All right, you may go back. Uh, we go in the back room. We're going to have lessons if you want. We're welcome to stay out of here as well. The prayer shell ministry, for those who don't know me. Uh, while I was attending church council in April, Kim Lewis gave a report of our youth, Chelsea's mom, and also mentioned Chelsea, her daughter, who liked 100 crosses for Africa. Diane and I sighed. Uh, <laughs> the members are Diane Anderson, B.J. Stewart, Barbara Day, Kimberly Statz, Jennifer Johnson, Sue Goulet, Virginia Murphy, Diane Martin, Vi Amons, Pat Litz, and myself. We lost Faye Humes last month and Karen has moved to Spartanburg to be with her family. It takes wool of 66 inches if you are making a cross and cut out, as Kimberly has measured. Uh -huh. We also want to thank Diane and Ted for opening their home every other Wednesday for us to be together. After Chelsea's request, Pastor Dennis requested 60 for his trip with the, with the machine gun preacher in July. We are done meeting for the summer, but continue to work at home. We call ourselves the hookers. Because <laughs> we will pray for you, Chelsea, as you travel to Africa and for Pastor Dennis, and bless you your 100 crosses plus 12 special crosses for special people that you meet on your journey. Also, Pastor Dennis, we would like you to bless 85 crosses for your trip 
God bless you. Travel safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Blessing these proud to take this pressure and lift them up and others to your sake. Oh God, we ask, the oh Lord, that you would ever be present with us today. We know, oh Lord, that you have come as the bread of life to heal a hurting world. We pray a special blessing upon, upon this prayer shawl that Don will receive. We pray, oh Lord, that you would bless the hands that have made it. And as he receives it, may he also receive the comfort of your Holy Spirit, that you will help him in his time of need. We pray for Jackie and for Ezra and for others that are here and those who are unable to be here for whatever reason. We praise you, Lord, that Bill and Janice were able to, to join us today. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to watch over them. We pray for Dick Murphy, who has been recently uh, came out of the hospital, but we pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with, be with him and their family as they, as they look for direction to rebuild their home that was destroyed by fire. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you would just be with each and every one of us. Help us to turn our hearts to you. May you renew us. May you revive us as we remember this gift that you have given us to celebrate around the table in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the choir.
get y'all to take this back. Okay. We're happy to have you here, and it's, it's nothing can keep us away from Jesus. That we need to have that same kind of faith as Bill and Janet, and their example of love for one another and love for God. If we could only have a fraction of that, we would be able to move mountains as well. But we thank God for your faithful witness. Hear these words of assurance, and again, respond. We don't even think. And remember that there's so many in the world that don't even have a slice of bread to eat. We're giving up carbs for the past two months uh, for the most part. And yesterday I was cutting out little bread men while I was watching the hockey game. And, and I was tempted, boy. And I wanted to shove it. And I had, I had a crust. I cut the first couple men out and I had the crust remaining. And I shoved a whole big crust in my mouth and I felt guilty on my here we are, forgiving our sins and lead us not in the So I to run over to the garbage can and purge myself. <laughs> and purge myself. But how much joy do you have around the table? Our best memories growing up it was being around the kitchen table or at my grandma Jenny's table. She would make flatbread and you'd go and you'd help knead the bread and hear the stories. And her house was only had two, three rooms in her house. And you'd sit around the tables, but as you put your hands in the dough, you, you made, made memories, right? You know, you remember, and that's what this day is all about. It's a day to remember that I am the bread of life. Let's listen to this short music just as part of it. here and it says who is this Jesus who is this Jesus and this is what the Gospel of John helps us to do and over the next several weeks we're going to be working on who is this Jesus and John uses many different names to be able to describe who Jesus is unlike the other gospel writers Matthew Mark and Luke they write what's called the synoptic gospel they record the history of what Jesus did and they wrote to different audiences you know, uh, Mark was probably written before Matthew ever was written. We have the book of Mark, and it's the Reader's Digest version of who Jesus is. And it wasn't written to a Jewish people. It was written to a Greek world, right? And so they didn't care about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? And so they tell just this is what Jesus did, so believe in him because of the many things that he does. Luke was a doctor, so he gives us the Christmas story, and he presents Jesus as the God-man. He's born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate and, and all the stories. He also writes the book of, of Acts for us as the story of Pentecost and the birth of, of the church. And Matthew was written to show that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament to Jewish people. So they trace Jesus' genealogy all the way back to, to um, Abraham. And so they're able to see the genealogy and how Jesus fulfills the words of the prophet. But the Gospel of John takes it into another dimension. And he gives us all these metaphors. It starts off in the very first verse of the book of John. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word with it was with God, right? And all things came into being through that wonderful Word of Jesus. He makes it sound like we're reading out of the book of Genesis. And we realize, you know, as we read the Gospel of John, we get a new beginning because it introduces us to Jesus. And he gives us these metaphors or illustrations. And today's illustration, as you have already partaken of, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Different names, right? I am. Whenever Moses went to the mountain and he was receiving the Ten Commandments and God gives him all these rules, and he says, God, I have one more important question. What if they ask me what your name is? What am I supposed to say? Right? 
They wanted to know because they were worshiping all kinds of gods, the gods of Baal and others, and they had statues and different things that they could bow down to, right? Right? And he says, God replies from that burning bush, and he says, I am. Right? Tell them that I am. Right? He sounds like Papa. I am what I am. Right? It is the great I am. So when Jesus goes and he shares with those after he after he feeds the 5,000, he begins using the illustration. After that miraculous prophetic moment as he feeds the 5,000, Jesus simply states this first I am. And he says, I am the bread of life. At this, the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They wanted a sign. They wanted to see a miracle. Even though they just saw him feed the 5,000 with a small boy's lunch, he feeds the multitude. They said, we want a sign. What more do you need? Right? Jesus says, I am the bread of life. This past weekend, we, as a nation, we've heard the news that Muhammad Ali has passed. And many know him for his flamboyant style, his poetic words, his hard punch, and for his faith, right? Or his renouncing of his faith. He says, I am the great, right? I float like a butterfly, I sting like a bee. I'm a hollow leaf, right? But he originally was Cassius Clay, right? And he, he decided that in the 70s that it was a time to renounce his Christianity and to become a Muslim. A good man that helped lots of people in the world. But today when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, even though the world calls you the greatest fighter of all time, if you deny me before men, when you stand before the judgment throne of God and God is there in his black robe and you're standing before the judge and he's going to say, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, you were a great fighter. Right? I like, I like, um, what's the guy that sells the George Foreman? George Foreman grills. Right? <laughs> I'm a doughboy. I think food. You know, I like the George Foreman grill. Takes the fat away, easy cleanup. You know, but I like George Foreman. You know? George Foreman kept coming back even when he was older and older and older. And George Foreman had multiple sons and he named them all George. <laughs> Isn't that kind of funny, right? He named all of his sons George, right? And just like we all need to be named after our father and those that we follow. In Antioch, the followers of Jesus were so much like them that they gave them a nickname and they called them Christians because they were like little Christ. Today, we partake and we ate of little Christ. We ate of the little dough man, right? We ate of that, of that bread of life that came down from heaven. Because Jesus said, I am the bread of life, those people became angry. Because Jesus was saying, I am. We are many different things and we wear many different hats. As, as I changed my clothes this morning and different things and, you know, I had a wardrobe malfunction, my sister reminded me of. You know, I went, I went and changed, changed again on there. But, you know, I have different names that I go by. You know, most of you call me Dennis. Right? Some of you call me pastor. Some of you call me reverend. I put the bowl in the cup, bowl to the couple weeks. I said, I'd like to be a parson. Some people don't like it. Some people hate it. You know, and I think like Parson Brown and, you know, Mary Frosty the Snowman. Uh, uh, you, know, you know, just to be different. A parson was someone who was kind of independent. You know, that even though that he took care of a flock. Right? And, and when we were having issues within our whole denomination, I said, sometimes it wouldn't be bad to go a little rogue. You know, a little bit, and just care for our, our own own flock. You know, I went to my sister's or my niece's wedding out uh, in West Virginia, and, and my brother-in-law was introducing me to different people that that I never met before. And he says, "This is Kukamook, right?" <laughs> and, 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 and they call me Kukamook. You know, and some people call me pastor, some call me parson, some call me reverend, some call me Dennis, some call me preacher, some call me pastor, some call me bad name. You know, all different names that people people call us. But Jesus reveals himself that he is one, but he reveals himself in many ways. And sometimes when we're going through different periods of our lives, we need different images to stick with us. All right? I started off with our children today talking about how it's a time to look back and a time to remember. Right? On our bulletins for the past two weeks, I've been putting on the top of our bulletin in the front cover, it says, 
Remembrance, renewal, and revival. Remembrance, renewal, and revival. Today is a day that we remember and look back. On the front of our community table, why I moved it out front instead of behind here so you could read the words on the front. It says, this do in what? In remembrance of me. This do in remembrance of me. We are called and gathered here each and every week to do so in the name of Jesus Christ. We light two candles on the altar table even if we don't have the bread and the juice there every week. And the two candles represent the two natures of who Jesus Christ is. He is, the, he is fully human and he's fully divine. If we snuff out one candle, our religion is a sham. And, it, and it's a lie. You need both. For he is the God-man. He is the bread of life that has came down from heaven. And when we gather together, Jesus gathered together with his disciples one last time. We gather together as family. We gather for holidays and birthdays and anniversaries and different occasions and graduation. What do we do? We eat. We gather around the table and we eat. You know, when my mom passed away and it was a time to put together her video for her remembrance of the funeral home, I said, dear God, every picture we have of a family, we're all in bathing suits. We never have clothes on, right? <laughs> Our family, any time we took family pictures was when we were on vacation because my dad worked two, three jobs. He was never home, you know, but for two weeks a year, he belonged to us. And we would go to the beach and we'd go to Ocean City, Maryland, you know, and, and we'd spend time together as a family and my dad was our dad, right? During, during that time, he didn't belong to the rest of the world. And we make memories. Probably why we moved to the beach as, as adults when our lives get chaotic and go out of control, we want to go back and say, when was the happiest moment of my life? When my mother was, was sick and dying in the hospital, she would close her eyes and remember water skiing up in Maine where, where my dad ran a camp and she was the camp nurse and, and Debbie and my brother grew up there uh, in the summers uh, up, up in Maine. She said, I just close my eyes and pretend I'm, I'm water skiing when she's laying in the MRI tube or, or whatever it may be and it takes us to another place. So we moved to the beach. Because we want to remember that feeling that we have when we're on vacation. But when we get here, we realize you still got to pay bills, you got to go to work, and you can't get to the beach all the time, and you can't get through 501 traffic. <laughs> so we're so close, we're there. <laughs> you know, and, and those who were gathered together and those who were questioning Jesus, they were so close, but they couldn't get there. They were looking for a sign and they, they wanted a symbol. They wanted a, something. And Jesus is transforming their most sacred gathering of all time, the time of the Passover, a time to remember how God delivered his people back home again after they had been enslaved for hundreds of years in Egypt and how God delivered them. And Moses, that stuttering prophet, right? And he goes and he speaks to Pharaoh with his brother Aaron. He says, let my people go. Right? And he delivers them. And what should have been a 12-day journey took them 40 years to get there. A long time. You know, just a little bit less than the time I spent since I've been in kindergarten. Right? You know, and then he led them to the promised land. And along the way, they eat those different food on the plate. And it represents the suffering and, and the struggles and the different things. But one of the most important pieces that they have is in the middle, they have, have little wafers of, of matzo bread. And it reminds them that while they were in the wilderness, the people began grumbling to Moses, right? And they said, you know what? We've done this long enough. We've been walking in circles. You don't know where we're going. Your GPS isn't working. You don't know the map. We don't know where we're going. They're grumbling and complaining. They said, you know what? When we were back in Egypt, we you know we were slaves and we were much better off. We want to go back. Yeah. And so he prays, dear God, help me with these people. They just keep grumbling and complaining and they're hungry. So God says, tell you what. Six days a week when they wake up, tell them to go out on the ground and they're going to find, find some bread that's forming on the ground. Some say it may have been a mushroom or some other things that would rise up and from the dew and other things it would turn into. But God provided this manna from heaven and they would scoop it up. And on the sixth day, they would grab a double portion, just like the crosses. We double the crosses. They take a double portion to sustain you because on Sunday you weren't supposed to do any work. Because that was one of those commandments that God gave Moses: honor the Sabbath and keep it what keep it holy, right? And so they take up that double portion, and God would provide them. And then God provided them their daily bread, but that wasn't good enough for the people. And they were eating the bread and they said, you know what, we need to go on the Atkins diet because we've been eating bread and manna for all these years. We need some meat, right? You know, and they want some meat, right? You know, well, we're eating chicken for two months, you know. You know, and they, we had steak at our retirement dinner the other day. And I'm like, oh, 
give me a plate of steak. You know, I wanted some meat. I was tired of, 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 of the birds, right? So God sends in a flock of quail and he gives them meat to eat. And they had so much that they couldn't, couldn't stand it anymore, right? And so they wanted to move on to other. When they were thirsty, he tapped the rock and, and water flowed out of the rock and they were able to drink and he was able to sustain them. But Jesus reminds them, he says, if you eat of my bread, you will never, you will never hunger again. You will never thirst again. Eat of my body, which is given for you. For I am the bread of life. And as we ate our little man today, we said to examine ourselves. What is it in our lives that we need to remove? Is it our mind that needs to be cleared? Is it our hands that cause us to do things that we shouldn't do? Do our feet take us to the wrong places where we shouldn't go? What is it that needs to be fixed? What is it that needs to be healed? Maybe there's relationships that are broken that, that need to be healed or, or mended or, or kept apart. We don't know what it may be, right? Those things. Jesus says to come to him and eat our daily bread and transform it into the bread of life. I had a loaf of wonder bread that I cut out little people you know, last night as I watched the hockey game, right? But it really it is wonder bread. I wonder why God would love me. Why would he love you? 2,000 years ago. Think about what that cross represents. 2,000 years ago, before you were ever born, God knew that you were going to spit on that kid on the bus in elementary school. <laughs> He's going to know that you said those mean words to your spouse. He's going to remember when you did whatever. And he says, you know what? I love you this much. I'm willing to die for you even before you were ever born. Even before you were formed and knit together in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I appointed you and I have given you a purpose. As you think about your own lives, what is your purpose? What is your purpose? Wouldn't you like to know? What are you going to be when you grow up? I'm still in kindergarten after 42 years and still wonder that. Some days, what am I supposed to be when I grow up? You know what? And then sometimes I think, you know what? I refuse to grow up. <laughs> you know, I want to play with the dough boy and I want to sit with the kids and, and even when they're in timeout, you know, and, and be able to, to laugh and enjoy things, right? Because the children knew the difference. We learned in our Sunday school lesson in Israel when they were looking for great kings and, and they, their children would take over when the king died. There was only probably one or two great kings after David, right? And Josiah was one of them. Josiah was only eight, nine years old when he became king. Imagine taking our kids in the back room saying, one of you are going to be president of the United States. Thinking of the choices that we have this year may not be a bad idea. <laughs> right? You know, maybe they could do a little bit better, right? Because both of them that are running are like children, right? One calls names and one does other things. You know, we all have, have issues on there. But we need help in the midst of it. Where do we go in the midst of change? Our pulpit moved. The technology didn't work. Things change, right? It makes us feel uncomfortable. We go back to that comfortable spot. Just like Debbie and I moved here from far away in the midst of our lives and say we want to find recapture that moment when we remember when we were happy right we want to go back to the table when grandma jenny knit the bread knit the dough and we needed the dough and she'd give you words of wisdom and advice right or or i always say the happiest sound on earth was the sound of my mother's cake saver <laughs> Ching! you know because my mother if, if you'd have a bad day she'd bake you a cake she'd bake you a pie she'd bake you whatever you know one time i got an f in algebra two and my mother gave me 20 bucks <laughs> i said mom if i got an a you don't even give me a dollar she says well honey i know you did you, you just don't understand it you tried your best you know, let's have some cake. <laughs> and she gave it 20 bucks. Like, wow, I should have tried so hard on all my other subjects. You know, but you remember, you know, my most valuable things that I have in my home today is that cake saver, one of the things that I have, and it reminds me. I don't have any cake in it, but I have the ching and I have the memories. And when we remember things, it takes us to another place. And today is going to be a day that you're going to remember. Maybe it's good the technology didn't work. Because our focus is not about a sound clip of Muhammad Ali. It's not about a, a great video from YouTube. But we already have what we need. A little dope man. 
For Jesus says, This is my body which is given for you. Take and eat. And remember that body was broken. Not just symbolically at a, at a meal, but on a cross. As we said, you know, Christ has died in our response today. But the good news is, Christ is risen. We lift up our hands and our, our t-shirts and our, our gathering with our youth for vacation Bible school in a, in a few weeks. We want people to be able to lift up their hands that we want to have joy in Jesus. What is the answer for our neighborhood where God has planted us on? Yes, we've been talking a lot about Africa and other places, but right now, right here in Conway, in the corner here of Singleton Ridge Road and 544, what do we need? For the world's a dark place. But people are hungry out there. Not just those who live in the woods around us, but people are hungering for the truth. And all they're getting is fast food. We have a McDonald's and a Dunkin' Donuts and a Bojangles and a Waffle House and all these other things. Comfort foods. Fast food. But in a world of fast food drive throughs we need to sit down and break bread together. Sometimes we need routine. Sometimes we need tradition. Sometimes we need to remember. And when that bread of life is transformed into something new, our daily bread becomes the dough man. It becomes the sacrifice. It becomes so much more. And it's not just when we offer it once a month here in church. But he says, transform your daily bread. Some of you probably have some leftovers and you don't know what you do with it. Should I set it on the pew? Should I put it in my pocket? Should I put it in my purse? Should I keep eating it during the service? You have a little bit left. Take it on with you. Right? <laughs> and when you need a reminder, say, God, forgive me. Take it on a hump off with it, oh man, I need it. Say, God, I messed up. When you get road rage of all the people on 544 and 501, why y'all wrong? Because I wasn't thinking like you want me to think. Right? Whatever it may be. It used to be when couples were married, they would give them communion in church. And they would give them the leftover bread and they would say, take it home and put it on your nightstand. That as they celebrate that most intimate moment together, they should break bread even before that time. Because it's an intimate thing. And there's no greater love than when two flesh become one. And as Christ has given his flesh for us, that's how intimate of a meal that we have is. It's like two bodies coming together as one. And even though we took our body and tore it apart in different pieces and ate it, we need to be able to form it all back together and remember the one body that it came from, that body of Jesus Christ. For we are many members, but we are one body. For there is one Christ, there is one Lord. He gave them bread from heaven, and the people grumbled about it. Today I give you the bread from heaven. Don't grumble about it, but bite it. And there's enough for seconds, right? Most times we tear up a little piece, we just want a little more. So. If I take you to Rio's buffet, what would you do? I'd load it up, my buffet. Right? I want to go back for some more. Well, this meal is prepared so that you can come back all you could eat. All you can eat, 24-7, anytime you want. And all the calories are removed. Right? All the sins are, are removed, right? Eat all you want. Right? And just like bread is transformed into sugar, it turns into something sweet. Right? Sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb is he for Andy, right? Our beekeeper uh, of the church. Right? Or his words. If we eat on them, if we feast on them. But, it, but you have to maintain it. You know, I've been working hard to lose weight, you know, but when I quit taking the supplements and other things, I hope it doesn't all come back in a month, you know? But we've got to figure out it's a new lifestyle, it's a new way of living. The same way when we come to the table, if we bite off the head of our dough man and dip it in the juice, and we go home sinning just the way that we did before we came in the door, all you did was have a nice little dough man dessert. And you had a snack. But if you bit that and you prayed, Father, help me with my addiction. Help me with my broken relationship. Help me with my pain and my resentment and my doubts and my fears. And God transforms you. It's like you become a new creation. It's like the potter who takes the clay and he molds it and makes it into, into something new. Right? But he brings life out of it like a Gumby or a Domian. Right? It becomes new life. You know, we say, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. 
You know, like Pillsbury chocolate cookies melting ooey gooey in the oven, right? You know, and my mom would be ashamed if it was Pillsbury popping fresh dough, right? It has to be homemade with real butter for it to really be something special, you know? You know, for it to be. And Jesus made this very special meal for you. Broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when we gather in remembrance of him, it's truly a time of renewal. Make America great. Not by who we elect, but by being the people of America. Remembering why our ancestors came across on boats and airplanes and however they got here. And they came for a reason, for religious freedom. That's why in our country, a Muhammad Ali can say, I no longer believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe and trust in all. I think it's misguided. I think it's wrong. And in fact, I read last night that his own father was worried about his soul. So he asked Billy Graham to meet with him and, and talk with him. Right? And Billy Graham prayed with him, and he did so even just a few years ago. I don't know what's in Muhammad Ali's heart. But I know that it says in God's word, in those red letters, if you deny me before others, I will deny you before my father. I'm not sure what he did before he breathed his last breath. My hope is that he returned to remember those lessons as a small boy. What he heard as Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Who comes to me will not hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst. And we hope that we too know what it means. And we hope that we too will share it with others. And if we do this at a time of remembrance and renewal, revival's not far from coming. Maybe we can't change the world, but we can change the corner that God has planted us on. We do so by becoming those little people, those little doughboys, those little Christ as we go into the world that others may want and hunger for more, that they, they may be satisfied. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. If you turn to the back of your bulletin, let us pray together before we sing. Let us pray together. Gracious God, you are the source of all true substance. Grant us the grace always to look to you for nourishment and to deepen our relationship with your Son, who feeds us with his continual presence. Thank you for the opportunity to study your word, share the wonder of your movement in this gathering, and be that movement as we depart from the world. All this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who invites each of us let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break.